Now let's talk about muscle. Now muscles, main purpose is contract. And by contracting and releasing, we can do all sorts of complicated movements, all sorts of complicated facial movements. And that's just by contracting and releasing. It's kind of like a computer. It seems very complicated, but at its core, at its basis, you can go from zero and one binary code on and off. And so like that, muscles can do very complicated things, but all it really does is contract and relax. So that will be the name of the game today. So muscles contract. And to learn how it contracts, we have to look at its anatomy. So muscles are made out of myocytes. Sites, cells, myo, muscle, muscle cells. And these are tubular cells. And they have what cells have, things like um, cytoplasm, things like endoplasmic reticulum, things like a membrane, all that stuff. But it goes by a different terminology. So just let's just review this so we won't get confused when we're talking about it. Instead of cytoplasm, we call it sarcoplasm. Sarco means flesh. So sarcoplasm. Instead of a smooth ER, we call it a sarcoplasmic reticulum. So instead of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, we call it a sarcoplasmic reticulum. And instead of a cell membrane, we call it a sarcolemma. And in the sarcoplasm, you see all these long protein cords called myofilaments. All these long cords. And these protein cords, you can have things like thick cords made out of myosin. You can have thinner cords made out of actin. And these cords can cross-link, and when they cross-link, they can contract. And so these are the things that contract. These are the things that help us achieve our main purpose, contracting, okay? But before we go into all that, I just wanna say there are a few types of muscles. You can have skeletal muscle. That's muscle that attaches to your skeleton. You can have cardiac muscles. That is muscles that are seen in your heart. That's where it gets its name, cardiac. You can have smooth muscles. Smooth muscles are these involuntary muscles that you can't really control. It's seen in a lot of places, seen in, seen in your respiratory system, seen in your blood vessels. That's what helps contract and constrict, relax. Your, your blood vessels also seen in your gut. So you don't really control your gut, but it helps you move that food around. So, so those are your different forms of muscle. Now let's see how they contract. We'll start with skeletal first. Let me draw the cell a little bigger. So we said you have these long protein cords and those are what contract. Well, your sarcoplasmic reticulum, aka your smooth ER, will form a net around these cords. There are little dilated ends called terminal cisternae, terminal meaning end. And it kind of just covers these cords now. So that's part of your sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now your plasma membrane, we don't call them plasma membrane when we're talking about the muscle, we call it sarcolemma. So your sarcolemma will also invaginate and kind of come across this entire complex. We call this transverse tubules because it's like a tubule that kind of transverses the entire complex. Transverse tubules. And this is part of your sarcolemma. Now these two can communicate with each other. So in your T-tubule, you have something called dihydropyridine receptor. So all right, T-tubule. And that communicates with the sarcoplasmic reticulum via a receptor called ryanidine. So that's found in your sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now this way they can communicate with each other. In uh, skeletal muscles, You have one T-tubule communicating with two terminal cisternae. We call that a triad. It's basically making, because basically there's three components. In cardiac muscle, you have one T-tubule talking to one terminal. Call that a dyad. Shout out to Orphan Black. So a dyad, because there's two components. 
So it's very important to communicate with each other. Why is it important? because it needs that communication to contract. Now we've been being around the bush, let's finally talk about how your muscles contract. We have a neuron, it releases acetylcholine and causes depolarization of our muscle cell. That depolarization will travel down the membrane because that's their surface. So it'll travel down the membrane, including this invagination called the T-tubule. And by doing that, it's able to talk to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. How does it talk to the sarcoplasmic reticulum? Well, it talks with this receptor, your dihydroperidine receptor. And your dihydroperidine receptor will say, hey, I'm being depolarized. Communicate with the right anodine receptor of your sarcoplasmic reticulum. And when, and when it gets that signal, your sarcoplasmic reticulum will undergo a conformational change and release a ton of calcium into those long contracting cords and you have contraction. Hope that makes sense. That is the general gist of it. Now let's look at it in a little more detail. It's not enough to know there are these long protein cords that contract. It's not enough to know that they're made out of thick myosin or thin actin. We have to look a little further. Let's, let's look at it as closely as possible. So you have these thin cords and you have these thicker cords okay so I'll just write thin remember that's actin thick that's your myosin now let's look at the thin one in a little bit more detail your thin is made out of actin that's the name of the game but it's also made out of some other components there's something called tropomyosin that covers actin, kind of drapes over actin. So the little circles are gonna be your actin. The thing that drapes over it is gonna be your tropomyosin. And if that isn't enough, you have these little proteins called troponin C that likes to bind to calcium. You can, it's easy to remember, troponin C binds to calcium. So those are your thin myofilaments. How about your thick myofilaments? Well, your thick like we said, it's made out of myosin, so it's made out of myosin. And it has this little head on the top. And the head has two binding sites, one for ATP, because we need energy to contract, and then one for actin. Your myosin loves to bind to its friend actin. It's right there, it just loves to bind to it. But here's the problem, it can't. We say that tropomyosin is just draped over actin. And so it wants to bind to it, but it's knocking onto that tropomyosin and it can't bind until calcium is released. When calcium is released, calcium will bind to troponin, troponin C. And when it binds to troponin C, it'll cause a conformational change in tropomyosin, the thing that drapes over it. And tropomyosin will go away and then cover your actin. Now myosin's like, I can finally bind. So it gets ready to bind to actin. It has actin right here and it gets ready to bind to it. So ATP, if it's on there already, it'll hydrolyze and become ADP and phosphate. And this primes your myosin. It primes your myosin. So now myosin can bind to your actin, finally. ADP will leave. And when ADP leaves, myosin will contract. All right, contract. And it'll pull your actin into itself. Now a new ATP will jump on. And when new ATP jumps on, it causes myosin to release. So myosin now releases. And that is the cycle. And then the cycle starts all over. So ATP can hydrolyze to ADP and phosphate and that'll cause the myosin to prime. It'll bind to it. And then ADP will release and that'll cause it to contract. And then ATP will come back on and then that'll cause it to relax. And the cycle will start all over again. And the cycle will start until basically calcium is sequestered and actin is blocked from binding. 
or if you run out of ATP. So if you run out of ATP, then you can no longer bind and release myosin. Myosin stays contracting and it can't release. Um, some, some situations where that happens is if you die, you can no longer make ATP. So it'll cause contraction and you can't release it. So you get things like rigor mortis where a dead person will just has sustained contraction and they can't release it because they can't make ATP. So that is how you contract. Now let's just talk about the sarcomere in uh, a little more detail. Sometimes they like for you to identify on an electron microscope. So they'll just show you the sarcomere. So the sarcomere, we said this is the thin filaments and this is the thick filaments. Right in the middle will be your M line, M for middle. That's right, M. Don't write middle. <laughs> At the end will be your Z line. Z line. Z as in the end of the alphabet, so Z as in the end of your sarcomere. So Z. Your I will be where your thin filaments are. Thin. Your H will be where your thick filaments are. And then this part where they kind of overlap will be your A line or your A zone. Okay? So those are the zones of your sarcomere. I have a really nice picture in my notes, so make sure you check that out. <clears throat> what happens when they contract? Your myosin will bind to the actin in this A zone because that's where they overlap and they'll pull everything towards it. Okay, so your A zone stays the same, stays the same, and it pulls the entire sarcomere into itself. So basically everything else contracts. So H, I, Z will contract, contract. Important you know that I had a few questions on that. Sarcomere questions suck because sarcomeres are just you know hard to visualize, but make sure you check out my notes for a good picture and know that A zone stays the same and H, I, Z contracts. Now there are different types of skeletal muscles depending on how you want to use that muscle. So if you watch the Olympics, you have people that do marathons, really long, sustained endurance training and then you have people who do that do sprints so very fast bursts and you can tell by the muscle shape they're different and if you biopsy their their leg you'll see that the muscle type is different so there are two types of skeletal muscles the main type one of them is type one and this type one muscle is used for sustained endurance training and if you do sustained endurance training then you're going to have more type one okay so type one is noted by its slow twitch or slow firing it is red on biopsy It's red because it has a ton of mitochondria and it needs that mitochondria because it needs to make all that energy via our oxidative phosphorylation our oxygen pathway so mitochondria oxygen makes a ton of energy makes you um, allows you to have that sustained endurance now type 2 on the other hand is different type 2 is what you'll see in sprinters. So this is that fast twitch, basically fast explosive muscles that give you a lot of strength early on. And it does that because it has low mitochondria. So if you do a biopsy, it'll look kind of white because it doesn't have that mitochondria. It doesn't have a lot of myoglobin. And low mitochondria means you can't use oxygen as a fuel source, and so you use anaerobic metabolism. The good thing about anaerobic metabolism is that it's quick. So you get that quick burst of energy. The bad thing is it runs out also quick. So you don't get sustained energy. So you go for a short burst and then you kind of flame out. Those are your two types of skeletal muscle. I think I'm done talking about skeletal muscle. Let's move on to the other types of muscle. We're going to talk about cardiac. Cardiac is seen in your heart. And cardiac has a sarcomere kind of like skeletal muscle, but it differs from skeletal muscle because it's involuntary. And also it has gap junctions. Why do you think your heart muscles have gap junctions? Because it needs to coordinate with each other, yeah? When it depoles, all of it needs to depole in a coordinated fashion, otherwise you have things like arrhythmia. So it has gap junctions. And um, that whole system of depolarization is similar. However, instead of dihydro, Paridine receptors, we replace that with L-type calcium receptors and channels. So that calcium channel will talk to your ryanidine receptors of your sarcoplasma reticulum and causes it to release calcium. And sometimes because 
This calcium channel causes the release of more calcium. We call it calcium-induced calcium. Okay, that is your cardiac muscle. One last one, smooth muscle. Your smooth muscle shares a lot of similarities with both of them. So it shares similarities with cardiac because it's involuntary. It has cap junctions because they need to coordinate. It doesn't have sarcomeres, however. So no sarcomeres. Smooth, no sarcomeres. Instead, it looks kind of like this. You have this dense body that has all these active filaments. And then you have your thick filaments kind of in the middle. It's kind of um, less organized, I guess you could say. And because it's less organized, you don't see that sarcomere. You don't see that those type restrictions. So that's your smooth muscles. Again, it's involuntary. So um, your autonomic nervous system controls it. Also releases hormones that can control it. All involuntary, you don't think about it. How does that? Calcium plays a huge role. When your cell depolarizes, calcium will be released and it'll bind to a protein, calmodulin. This calmodulin calcium complex will go down and activate your myosin light chain kinase. Now, all kinases put phosphate groups on things, that's what they do. So there's an enzyme that puts a phosphate group on your myosin. And by doing that, it activates myosin ATPase. And that helps break down ATP, um, kind of revs that cycle over quicker and activates myosin, causes contraction. That is contraction, how about relaxation? Well, relaxation, it's similar because it needs calcium, so relaxation needs calcium. But it does it through a different mechanism. So things that substances or autonomic control that needs to cause relaxation will work on your endothelium cell. So your endothelium. And in your endothelial cell, it'll cause calcium release. And calcium will turn L-arginine into nitric oxide via the enzyme NO synthase. NO will diffuse into your smooth muscle cell and activate GTP, turn into cyclic GMP. And GM, cyclic GMP is just a secondary messenger, it does a ton of things in different sites. But in this cell in particular, it will activate myosin light chain phosphatase. What does phosphatase do? Phosphatase takes away that phosphate group from your myosin and that lowers activity, causes relaxation. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's your muscles. I uh, just want to go over a few background information. Um, know how it contracts is very important. Know the mechanism of which they've been asking that a lot, um, especially the sarcomere. And hopefully this will kind of lay down the foundation, the groundwork for when we're talking about muscle pathology. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.